Today, for our viewers, we want to highlight the new features and enhancements that came out with Dash 2.6.0. These include the background callbacks, the unit testing of callbacks, and the persistent selections of graphs. These are very important features that really enriches the experience of using Dash and Plotly. And so in this video part one, Chris is going to give us a brief overview of each one of these features. And then if you want to see part two, you can click above and we'll do a deep dive of all these features of Dash 2.6. All right, Great. Chris, what, what can you tell us about the, the background callbacks? Why is it such a, an important feature to, to have? Mm -hmm. So in Dash 2.0, we released long callbacks. And background callbacks is basically a rewrite of the long callbacks feature. In the long callbacks feature, there were a handful of limitations uh, that were kind of built around the way that we architected it. You couldn't use long callbacks with pattern matching callbacks. Um, you had difficulty using it if there were uh, you were attaching a long callback to content that was added dynamically to the page. So we uh, revisited that feature. We re-architected it to remove all of these limitations so that this feature now has parity with regular callbacks. As part of this rewrite, um, we didn't want to make any long callbacks, uh, changes to long callbacks backwards incompatible. So we rewrote the feature and we renamed it to background equals true within the callback signature. Everything that is, remains in long callbacks, long underscore callbacks in the API remains. We didn't make any changes there, so there aren't any backwards incompatible changes. Um, now, long callbacks, background callbacks, they run your callbacks in a background queue, which means that they run them one at a time. So if there are multiple people that are hitting that callback at once, um, the background callbacks will submit that callback Python code to a queue, and it will run it one at a time. This is really important for applications that need to scale to many users visiting the application at once, or for callbacks that take a long time. If they take longer than 30 seconds, they'll often run into a timeout issue. Um, and a way to get around these timeout issues is to run them as a background queue. Perfect. And I just want to add that a lot of the work that our Plotly staff uh, has done with this um, background callback is thanks to the feedback that we get from the community about the long callback that we have. So thank you, community members, for, for giving, you, giving us your feedback. Definitely. What about the unit testing, Chris? Why is, uh, why is that so groundbreaking? Yeah, so, so testing in general is a really key part of software development. And testing enables you to automate the type of manual QA that you would be doing when you make a change to your application. So instead of clicking through your Dash application whenever you make a change to make sure it didn't break anything, you can sort of automate that by writing tests in Python um, that will uh, either do that clicking for you, and that's integration testing, which we've had a, for a while now. Um, or you can do it on a little bit of a lower level and verify the inputs and outputs of your callback. And that is unit testing. Previously, you'd have to refactor your code to take uh, the logic in your callbacks and put it into a separate regular Python function that's not decorated by a callback, and then unit test that. With Dash 2.6, we've change the, uh, the function signature of callbacks and some of the internals around callback context that allow you to unit test the callback itself without refactoring your code. So you can write a unit test directly on your callback um, and, uh, and you don't need to change any aspect of your dash code to do that. Perfect, so a lot faster, a lot quicker, a lot easier to, to test your callback now. How about the persistent selection? I, when I saw that um, as we were creating the PRs and and uh, just create, creating this new feature, I got excited about it because I remember my experience using uh, selections in graphs. But can you tell us a brief like summary? Why why is it so cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll share my screen really quickly and just show you um, what persistent selections look like. Great. So well, you know, as sure as soon as the screen is shared, one second. Okay, you're good. So we've had selections. Um, for a while in Plotly and in Dash. Persistent selections enables this, provides this selection uh, rectangle to be persistent so it doesn't go away. 
previously in Dash, when you would draw a selection like this, the points would display as selected, but this box here would go away. And with persistent selections, we've kept the box around. And this is really nice because if you made, um, if you want to tweak your selection a little bit, like say there's this point here and you actually want to include that point, but everything else looks good, you can just expand your selection box to include that, that point. Similarly, if you're looking at maybe a time series plot and this selection is roughly like represents roughly a month, um, you can drag the selection box to then look at the next month or then look at the next month without needing to redraw it. Um, selections are a really important part of many Dash applications. They provide this visual filtering and this makes uh, cross filtering and visual filtering feel a little bit more first class. Thank you, Chris. This this um, is a good succinct summary of the persistent selection. Um, uh, we hope that this was uh, made it easier for you to understand everything that has just come out with Dash 2.6. Uh, don't forget to check out our announcement post uh, to read in more detail everything that we just talked about. And join us in video part two to um, hear about the deeper dive of every feature. Thanks, Chris. Oh, thanks, Adam. Okay.